Hey guys, welcome back to A-Level Lessons. Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at our math series again. We're going to be carrying on with the next part of statistics, looking at binomial distribution. All right? A lot of you guys have been crazy over uh, the PNC content, probability, as well as the discrete random variable, what, what have you. So if you guys want more of those, do let me know. And I'll do a bit of questions uh, that answers those questions, right? So that you guys um, can get better at PNC, probability, all that kind of stuff. So this is going to be like a content series for this video. And we're going to be looking at this thing called binomial distribution. So we're going to look at what are some of the properties, how do you use your graphic calculator for this, and what are some of the things that you need to take note. So it's not going to be a full fledged uh, like what your school may teach. Right? It's going to be a summarized version of the important points that you need to know for binom distribution. All right? After this, we'll look at normal distribution as well. All right, firstly, we have got properties of binomial distribution. So binomial distribution is essentially a type of distribution. So in your course of studying for the A-levels or math or statistics in general, you will come along uh, a few distribution types. For example, binomial distribution. You have normal distribution. All right, so binomial distribution, okay, can be simply thought of as the probability, probability of a success and failure okay, not particular n, okay, more of all, right it's more of the success or failure right of any sort of um experiment right or a survey or a certain data set they are trying to assess. Okay, so you're looking at this very simply, the success and the failure of as an outcome, right? So this is the success failure outcome. So in any binomial distribution, right, it has certain properties that it has to follow. So we have got properties of the binomial distribution. And what are these properties? We have three types of properties. Firstly, being that any sort of binomial distribution, right, it will consist of n independent trials, okay, n number of independent trials. Meaning to say that for every outcome, right, be it a success or failure, right, it has to basically be independent of each other, right? So it's an individual, right? It's not a grouped outcome or result that will be obtained. The second property is that each trial of whether it's going to be a um, whatever the outcome is, okay, has two outcomes. And as we have discussed in the first line just now, this is whether it's going to be a success or a failure. Meaning to say, let's say if I take out a certain ball from a certain bag of balls, right? It is, will I get a red color ball? That will only have two outcomes, right? It could either be a success. Yes, I do take out the red color ball from the bag. Or no, it could be a failure. I end up taking out a blue color ball from the bag, right? So it's always going to be independent for each ball I take out. And it only has two outcomes, either success that it is uh, indeed a red color ball, or it is a failure that it is a different colored ball. So the last property that we have is essentially going to be that the probability of success, so we're looking at specifically the success for each trial. So each time we take out this red color ball, which is also denoted by P, right? P always stands for probability, usually, right? In the case of statistics, it remains constant. Meaning to say that for every single ball I take out, right, the probability will always going will always be the same, right? It has to be denoted by this. For example, one over five balls, right? This probability of it being a red color ball, for instance. So we'll take a look at more wh why this is so and, and how does it actually work. But just take note that for now, um, this is essentially the three main properties that you have to make sure you have in order for a distribution to be a binomial distribution. So take note of these three properties. 
All right, so some of you guys will learn in school this formula over here is good to take note that this is essentially when you're calculating the binomial distribution, what the outcome will be. It's a formula whereby we look at the n number of trials, we choose x, kx being the variable factor over here, right? Depends on what the question gives you. So we look at specific questions more. You, you can check out my, either my YouTube memberships or Patreon. I have a lot of questions uploaded there. As well as, I'll be doing some questions as well on this channel in the future, but not as of so soon, for binomial distribution. Multiplied by the probability to the power of x times 1 minus this probability, so this will be the failure. So it's the success multiplied by the failure and the number of trials minus x being your variable factor. And so this is for any value, whereby x equals to 0, 1, or anything that adds up all the way to n, right? Because n is the maximum that it will go, in this case, the number of trials. So the binomial distribution formula, or per se the distribution, how is it distributed by, is always going to be denoted as such. x is binomially distributed, so b for binomial, so binom n, which is the number of trials, comma p, right? So n denotes the number of trials, p denotes the probability, as we've discussed earlier, of success of each trial. So take note, these are going to be what you're going to be looking at a lot, right? You always see something like x is binomially distributed by, let's say, 10 trials, number of trials, over 1 over, let's say, 24. Let's say there's only well, one probability of getting a red color ball out of 24 balls, right? So you always see something like this. So just take note that this is going to be what you're going to be looking at. Every time you see something that needs to be normally distributed, this should be how you would denote it. So this is essentially where we would end off in terms of understanding what the basics of binomial distribution are. So very simple, you, your school notes will have a lot of things, go and read that up as well. But for me, I feel these are the more important points. Your three main properties as well as how a binomial distribution is actually uh, expressed, okay, in terms of this x, which is your binomially distributed by n, p, right? So in binomial distribution, you will also find that you would see your expect or expectation of x as well as the variance of x. So this is a formula that you have to remember. Okay, the expectant of x is going to be n multiplied by p, so the number of trials multiplied by the probability of success. Okay, and the variance of x would just be the number of trials multiplied by the probability of success multiplied by the probability of failure. Right? So this is the probability of failure, which is very simple. It's just going to be q equals to 1 minus p because probability has a maximum value of 1. So to find the failure, you just take 1 minus the success rate, in this case being in this case being your um, success rate being p, and then you'll be able to find what your q is, which is going to be the probability for failure. Right? So it's quite a simple part to do. All right, so moving on, um, just to clear up some stuff, for example, on how you should be using your GC. So for your GC, you would find that you can actually calculate what the probability would be um, for any sort of question using these two um, key components of your, of your GC known as binom PDF as well as binom CDF. Right? PDF is for anything that is fixed. Right? CDF is for anything that is inconsistent. Right? So take note, okay, binom PDF is only when you are going to compute a case whereby x equals to your small x, so whatever the variable factor is. And then for the case of binom CDF, you're going to have to do some changes. Okay? You can only compute for when your probability is less than, okay, your x is less than or equals to your small x. Okay, it cannot be more than, all right, just take note of this, it's very important. Okay, so if the question gives you more than, for example, they're asking you to find what is x more than 3, 
Alright, if the question gives you more than or equals 2, you have to convert it. And how do you convert this? Very, very simple. Let's say if they give you P, X is more than 3. How you would convert it is you would take this 1, which is your total probability, minus the case that X is less than or equals to 3. So you would simply go ahead and use 1 minus your binom CDF over here. Right in the case whereby your uh, whatever your your answer would be okay in this case it'll be your n p x over here is usually going to be small x which will be three in this case right so if it's more than or more than three you would take less than or equals to three right because three is still counted right if let's say the question gives you p sorry if you couldn't see that let's say the question gives you x that is more than or equals to four. This is not the same. You would have to take 1 minus p x less than or equals to 4. All right, because in this case, 4 is included. In this original case up here, when you're looking at 3, the 3 itself wasn't actually included in the case. All right, so when you minus it off, you need to include the 3. If it's really including, you have to include the 4 in this case over here below. Alright, so just to take note of that, okay, it's a bit of a more important part to this entire part on binom, right? You have to learn how to make sure that you can convert it, right? In, in any case, right, for this, you can also always use p x equals to 4 plus p x equals to 5 plus p x equals to 6 plus so on so forth, right, until it gets to the limit of n. Right, so this can always be an alternative as well, and then you can just use binom PDF instead to use it. So as far as possible, if they give you more than equals to, you can either use either method over here, and that would help you to be able to calculate what your final answer would be. Right, so just take note for distribution-wise in your GC, binom PDF, uh, sorry, you would usually use the function of distribution or distribute binom pdf and how you indicate it would be via n p which is the probability of success and your x okay, whatever the variable factor is and for binom cdf it's the exact same thing you would just key in n p x so just take note of this when it comes to using your graphic calculator this can be something that you can take note Right, so that is all for this video that I have. I understand that, you know, it may be a bit of a very strange sort of a video that, you know, you're not really used to, but not to worry, okay? This video that you have gone through, just take notes on it, right? Understand what are the properties, understand how the formula is like, what the distribution is represented by, and then when it comes to actual questions, it'll be much easier to actually apply it and understand how to actually answer it, right? So try and stay tuned for more of these binom distribution questions that I'll be doing on the channel, right? As well as uh, check, it, check out my YouTube memberships as well as my Patreon because I'll be doing a lot of questions on binomial distribution, how we can use the GC over there to actually discover our questions and uh, find out the answers, right? So in this case, uh, just take note of the basic stuff, right? This is a very simple video on summarizing the entire of binomial distribution. And once it gets to the later stage of answering the questions, I will teach you guys more on how we can apply whatever you have learned today into answering an actual question. So that is all I have for this video. Right? If you did enjoy and you did learn something, be sure to give it a thumbs up as well as to subscribe to the channel. It's free, it doesn't cost you anything and you can always change your mind later. And if you have any questions, you can always just leave it in the comment section below and I will answer them accordingly as well. So if not, stay tuned for the next one. We'll be going through normal distribution very, very soon. And if not, I'll see you guys then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.